please close the eyes. Let us begin this beautiful morning with a prayer. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karvavahe Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu Ma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 May God protect us all. May we enjoy food together. May we meditate and pray together. May we attain wisdom through our study and discussion. May there be no conflict among us. May there be peace within and everywhere. Om Amen. I bow to one formless God, I bow to all the saints and sages of all times and places, I bow to the lineage of Kriya Yoga masters and humbly I bow to Sri Gurudev and each one of you. Good morning and welcome. Celebrating Gurudev's birthday seminar, we will remember and discuss about Sri Gurudev. It is very rare to find a realized master like Sri Gurudev. Although there are many advanced teachers, many masters, but in modern time if you see it is not easy to find a realized master. Sri Gurudev had many divine qualities which were manifested in his talk, in his action and he lived his life in a very simple but practical way. Sri Gurudev lived the life by example not just by preaching and many very often he used to tell especially the teachers, be a teacher not a cheater because both words the syllables are same, you just change the order of some alphabets, it is C. So, he said be a teacher not a cheater, what does it mean? Be a teacher means a teacher is one if we go by the definition from the scripture, a teacher we call Acharya, Acharya is one Achinoti Shastrarthan, one who is collecting the knowledge from the scripture and applying in his life. So, once you become a teacher, then you have to first practice it, do not become a cheater because if you do not practice and you are preaching, then that is cheating, that is very clear instruction from him. So, very often he reminded us, are you a che cheater or you are a teacher? So, today remembering his birthday, some memories, we will discuss some of his teachings to follow in our life as he demonstrated. And this time we have kept a theme on a very small booklet we published in February, The Glimpses of Divine Life. So, you all can read that book, I will refer most of the things from that book. So, my topic given to me to speak about Sri Gurudev's life on certain aspects. So, one of the aspects of Sri Gurudev that he lived a life free from dogma. If you look around or nowadays 
the media because we are more influenced by the social media and we can see everywhere this world is at present is full of fanaticism, dogmatism, religious intolerance, superiority complexes and hatred and it is any part of the world you see these things are existing. All religions speak about love, no, no religion tells that do not love God, do not love people, they all say that love God. But how many of us are really following it? And how many do we really practice what is taught by the religion or even by the masters? So, instead of becoming a peaceful home for all, this beautiful earth has become a battleground for conflict, chaos. Dogma, what is dogma? It is a word derived from the Latin and Greek language. It means that that which one thinks is true. We hear something, we have <coughs> learned something and we have our own mindset, we have our own opinion and we think that this is true. So, we do not want to see the reality or complete truth, but when we are firm with our own conviction then it is called dogmatic view and it limits our knowledge, it limits our wisdom, we do not grow more, we are limited. Or another meaning of dogma is a philosophical tenet. If you remember in the last century, Swami Vivekananda, the great dynamos like Swami Vivekananji, Paramahansa Yoganandji, they came to the west and even in India they spread the beautiful scriptural teachings. So, when, Param, uh, when Swami Vivekananji came in 1893, that was the birth year of Paramahansa Yoganandji, he came here to Chicago and he spread the message of Vedanta, that how one can always contemplate on divinity and experience it. Through the scriptural knowledge, he gave this beautiful philosophy here about Vedanta. And when Paramahansa Yoganandji came, he taught the practical aspect of Vedanta which is called yoga. So, he taught about the yoga and meditation which is practical aspect of Vedanta. We can say that Vedanta is theory and yoga is the practice. Just a simple example, we all know, we have heard, we have read from the scripture Aham Brahmasmi, I am God, we have to contemplate about this. But if you just think, you read it that I am Brahman, will you become Brahman? It, it needs some practice, just knowing or theoretically getting this knowledge is not going to help. And yoga helps us to practice this aspect that how to experience that I am Brahman. So, both are like two wings of a bird and they go hand in hand. Do not think that yoga is different philosophy and Vedanta is different philosophy, they both are complementary to each other. And even when Paramahansa Yoganandji came, he gave beautiful interpretation about the Holy Bible, about Bhagavad Gita, which is in our lineage. I have not found any other lineage where you can get the metaphorical interpretation of the scriptures, especially both east and west. However, and following in their footprints, our beloved Sri Gurudev with his loving presence and simple way of teaching served people both in the east and west. And Gurudev also gave beautiful metaphorical interpretation on many scriptures including the Holy Bible or Bhagavad Gita and many other.
in those days when Sri Gurudev came to the west like he came in 1974-75 and then slowly he started coming more. But when he was returning to India, he also faced some difficulties. I am talking about the dogmatic views and do not think that it is in one country or one place or one community, it exists in many places. So, when Gurudev returned, some people did not like him coming to the west, those who are very orthodox people. So, during those days in the orthodox town of Puri, some people called him out loudly in a humiliating way and they said there is a word not a good word, they said Mlecha Guru. Mlecha Guru means uh, master of unclean people. Now, I think that nobody from Puri in those days had come like, like in a um, group or so had come to the west, they do not know what are the practices here, what are the customs or culture here and they just have their own mindset, this is what is dogma. So, they instead of knowing the reality, they started humiliating Gurudev, but you know what Gurudev did? He did not uh, uh, react or he just smiled and digested it silently with love. But anybody else would be def defending, reacting or responding in a different way, but Gurudev just smiled and digested because he knew what is the truth, what is reality and he is teaching that. So, he faced difficulty no doubt. Once I had heard this story many times and you also know that once Gurudev was coming uh, traveling and when he got down from the flight, so he was on wheelchair and wheelchair was being pushed by a disciple and suddenly a young man jumped in front of him because when a young man who saw this strange dress and he saw that a monk from India, so he wanted to humiliate Gurudev. So, he jumped in front of that and he shouted, Jesus is the only way. <laughs> now, what will you do when somebody is trying to humiliate you or trying to show aggression, what will you do? Definitely we react or defend or, but what was Gurudev's reaction? In the same loud pitch, Gurudev said, correct <laughs> and this man was shocked because he never expected that Gurudev would do like this and he had no other way, he silently left. So, this is how Gurudev uh, diffused the situation and he demonstrated that look, if somebody has dogmatic view or somebody has a different mindset, you do not necessarily have to respond in the same way but diffuse the situation and he gave a beautiful lesson to all. Gurudev accepted everybody, no matter from what walk of society you are, but he accepted everybody equally that is the sign of a realized master. And Gurudev also expected and respected all religions. I had never heard in my short span of uh, meeting with him or even in his teachings, I never heard that he criticized any religion or any community, never. What he did all the time, he was just talking about God, 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 nothing else. So, some beautiful incidents are mentioned in this little book, booklet. And you know Gurudev initiated people of different faiths. It was not easy in those days and you have must have heard the story about Swami Sri Yukteswarji that he ended up in trouble when he initiated being a non-Brahmin, he initiated a Brahmin boy and the Pandits or Brahmins in the community they objected and that is how he was inspired to take sannyasa or monkhood so that there is no more trouble after that. So, it was not so easy, Gurudev accepted, Gurudev initiated people from all faiths because Kriya Yoga has nothing to do with any particular religion, particular religion. It is the 
essence of all religion that is what Gurudev taught that Kriya Yoga is the essence of all religions. No matter who you are, <coughs> what faith you belong to, but you are children or you are child of God. So, just <coughs> with this philosophy and Gurudev's teaching, he said that <coughs> practicing Kriya Yoga, if you are a Hindu, you will become a better Hindu. If you are a Christian, you will become a better Christian and so on. That means, who you are, you will be the best in your own field, in your own faith. You do not need to change anything. You do not need to change your diet. You do not need to change your belief or faith. What you are, just remain in that and make it more strong, because all the paths are leading to the same goal and that is the message of Kriya Yoga. Sri Gurudev taught the essence of all religions and their intrinsic unity. He spoke about the inner meanings of the religious symbols and you know we have a book that from different religions we use lots of symbol in each religion. So, he has explained the metaphorical meaning of those also and his metaphorical interpretation of the scriptures gives the message to all the humanity. It is not for a particular set of only Kriya ones, but his message, his teachings are for the entire humanity. Sri Gurudev often said in humor that <coughs> the wheel of a bullock cart cannot be attached to a motor car. Therefore, do not be dogmatic, you should be practical. They do not expect that what I think and what the teachings of my own faith will be applicable to everybody. No, it depends on time, place, community and many other factors. So, one has to develop this acceptance and respect all. He also said that we live in a scientific age. So, our attitudes and our meditation should also be scientific. Not that um, you have to just close the eyes and because it is said, so you have to just follow. But he explained everything that it is a science and it, it should be a meditative. Even if you see the puja ceremonies which we do during our festivals or celebrations, Gurudev learnt and he taught also that it is also having a metaphorical meaning and also it is a meditative practice. Just for example, those who are from India, you will see that if there is any ceremony, the priest is continuously chanting lots of Vedic mantras for hours, but there is no explanation what they are doing or what is the meaning. But here, Gurudev, he learned from his master, Vijaya Krishnaji, and also he himself has explained that when we are taking water in our hand, so what to feel? So, if he combined Kriya in every aspect of life and you all know what is Kriya? Kriya and Ya, that is the basic principle of Kriya. Kriya means activity and Ya means divinity. So, any activity we are performing whether it is physical, mental or verbal, we have to feel the presence of divine in that. And Kriya is not just sitting one hour and meditating and all and practicing the techniques. But Kriya as Guruji also emphasizes that Kriya has to be 24 hours practice. So, it is an attitude, Kriya is not just technique, Kriya is an attitude to develop and practice in our daily life. And how do we practice? So, Gurudev explained that when we are taking food, we should feel that it is not me, I am offering food to God and God is enjoying the food. See, it is very simple, but we do not practice. When we are talking to our family members, let us feel that we are talking to God. If we try and develop this attitude of perceiving divinity in others, how can there will be conflict, hatred or any discord? It happens because we forget the divinity and I am not just preaching, but I am trying also. Sometimes I forget, but I am also trying. But this is how Gurudev taught that even the puja ceremony, it is a meditative aspect. So, 
Cree and Ya to remember always. And Gurudev said that how much do we really understand our own faith? Sometimes we do not like whatever we have received from our uh, family or our culture, we do not like it, but we should understand that also. So, how much do we understand our own faith and how much do we love others? Without which we cannot truly really grow. And what I have experienced also as Gurudev, Guruji, they all have experienced and also I came to this experience that by practicing Kriya, I could understand much better my own faith and others faith also. So, it has helped to bridge the gap to accept and respect others and Kriya really helps in that aspect. However, so Gurudev said that leave the life free from dogmatic views. Now, another aspect of <coughs> Sri Gurudev, it is the he lived a life of simplicity. A spiritual life is not a life to show off something. Although it happens that when we are practicing whether it is Kriya Yoga or any other spiritual practice, we definitely grow and we receive some grace of God and by grace of God and Master we also get some yogic powers. With Kriya also it happens and when we get something we start showing it off, boasting about it that I got it and that is where Gurudev showed that spiritual life is to be more simple, there is no need to show off anything that I am more spiritual. Other day I think in one of the classes in the last program, maybe in temple of compassion or somewhere the question answer session was there in which somebody had asked about the spiritual ego to Guruji. So, yes a spiritual ego also is a big hurdle. Honestly admitting I had the spiritual ego also when I joined the ashram before that. What was the spiritual ego? That I felt that I am more spiritual because I am meditating or I am doing some spiritual practices from my early childhood, but others are very worldly people. It was before I joined the ashram back in you know 2002, but when I came to ashram and I started learning under the guidance of Sri Guruji, he crushed that ego completely. How I will not tell, but <laughs> <laughs> completely crushed that ego. So, we also develop, I will give the example. After practicing Kriya Yoga for couple of years, we start feeling, oh, I am meditating so much, but these people are not meditating. Why should I go and join them in party? Why should I become a part of the community? Because they do not, they, they have parties, they have different kind of gossip and talks. So, we try to distance ourselves from them, which is not correct way. Kriya Yoga does not teach. Kriya teaches that you have to perceive divinity in that without getting affected. And do not judge because once we said that okay, I am a spiritual, you are not, it is a spiritual ego. So, Gurudev showed or demonstrated that a spiritual life should be a simple life. Did we hear about from his mouth those who are from his time that he never said that I am, I have achieved this, I am this or that. And even demonstration of his nirvikalp samadhi, he did for a certain reason because the people did not know. So, he wanted to show that look this is a stage which is possible for every common person if you practice Kriya sincerely you can attain. For that purpose he demonstrated not to show that I am a great person. However, if you remember the life of simplicity, once a person, a disciple had asked uh, Ramakrishna Paramhans, this master what is the sign of a realized person? This is the same question as Arjuna asked Lord Krishna in second chapter and he gave a list of qualities, isthita pragyasya ka bhasha samadhi sthasya keshava, how to know if, if a person is realized? So, there is a list in second chapter, many verses that how a realized person looks like or how do you know? I am not going to that topic, it is a separate thing. So, Ramakrishna Paramhans told in a very simple way, he did not give philosophical explanation, but in a simple way he said, he gave the example which is you know from day to day life. He said that if you 
boil a potato or egg plant. So, when it is boiled and cooked what happens? It becomes soft. So, one of the meaning of realized it is known as Siddha. So, Siddha means also the cooked. So, once you are realized then you become soft and soft means humble. Have you not noticed that thing in uh, Gurudev and Sri Guruji both? The humility. I, I got an email two days back in which a person who is not Kriyavan, he wrote about a letter about Sri Guruji that I have been practicing this certain um, discipline from other lineage or master not Kriya. But he said that I am not for many years, but I am not uh, satisfied with that. And I just heard two, two days ago, I saw your YouTube uh, question answer session from one of our ashram and I realized and felt that the humility and the real this the real master, realized master I have been searching, I had not found this humility and this kind of uh, in depth knowledge. So, how can I connect with you now? However, so humility, humbleness, this is the sign of a realized master and we saw that Gurudev always remained humble. You know he was so simple like a child sometimes. We heard from Guruji also that once uh, a disciple invited Sri Gurudev to come to Alaska. And Guru said, yes, I will come, he agreed. And when there was a conversation between Sri Guruji and Gurudev, so when Gurudev told that I, I have got invitation, I will go to Alaska. So, Guruji asked Baba, <laughs> that, do you really want to go to Alaska? Yes, I am invited. And Guruji said, but it is very cold. And she, very simply, he said, is it so? Then I will not go. Now, see the simplicity. If any disciple is trying to tell his master that you should not go, master is simply telling, okay. But if it happens with any one of us, what will do? Why you are trying to teach me? Do you know more than me? Who are you to instruct me? Is not it? This is the simple reaction, immediate reaction of our mind. Who are you to tell me? Did I ask you? But no, you see, this so you know, simplicity just like a child, he said, is it so? Is it so cold? Then I will not go. <laughs> see, this, this is, those who have seen Sri Gurudev, this is simplicity. Can you believe that a realized master who demonstrated, who, who attained Nirvikal Samadhi in 1948, demonstrated it in India many times and Coming to the west, when he was staying in disciples' houses, he did cooking for the disciples, he did cleaning the dishes and sometimes he did babysitting also, a realized master. But did he complain? No, he accepted and he helped everybody. This is simplicity. Otherwise, he would say, I am a realized master, why should I do this? Now, think about this aspect. Where we are, how we are and how our masters have taught us. Are we following that or we are, what, are, what we are learning from it? And Gurudev never boasted about his spiritual wealth or even his knowledge. He remained always simple. Even I remember or you can even read. When he gave the interpretation of scriptures, very simple interpretation. One of the example Isha Upanishad. If you read Isha Upanishad, you take anybody's commentary, it will be word meaning, then many different types of uh, interpretation. But see, Gurudev did not give word meaning, he gave the metaphorical meaning. It is a simple book, Isha Upanishad. And he taught in the light of Kriya Yoga, which is very much relevant to our practice and as we discussed the yoga is the practical aspect, not theoretical aspect. And if you see in 
modern time a spirituality also has become <laughs> a business and we are living in a big marketplace where there is a lot of marketing show exhibition propaganda and this is not just I am telling one disciple who was the governor of Odisha he told Gurudev also and Gurudev just smiled he did not say anything. Gurudev, Sri Gurudev stayed in Karar Ashram and he really did not want to go for teaching. But after long time, you know, he attended Nirvigal Samadhi in 1948 and he was teaching just few people, disciples. Only when he was insisted upon, he came to the West and he got the instruction from Babaji Maharaj. Otherwise, he was not interested even to come to the West or going out in public and teaching. He never, he just kept very low profile, very simple lifestyle. And when Gurudev was writing letters to his disciples, he always remember that he was writing humble Hariharananda. It shows his humility, it also shows that how simple he lived and demonstrated. Even if you see simplicity, his dress, although he was very particular about the dress, it should be proper, but simple dress. And his food, food was also very simple, measured food, very little amount of food he would take and then he will distribute it as prasad. Not that okay, today is something very delicious, so I will take one more or no, he, he was always very uh, disciplined and very uh, maintained his simple diet. His teachings are also very simple as I said that he never gave a very complicated meaning of uh, verses, he was made it very simple. Even he gave instructions to our teachers that when you speak, speak in a simple sentence, not that you are making a long, long sentence and you cannot comprehend. So, give the teachings in simple way as he did and when you speak, speak in very clear, distinct manner, which is good to understand simple way, not uh, because sometimes uh, when we are reading a lot, we get a lot of intellectual uh, words or so not to use even, you keep the teaching simple. He was very simple that in many times we saw that he was like a child. So, he was like a child with the children and youthful with the youths and an elderly person with elderly people. So, he was so much uh, you know accessible and so much sim so simple that anybody could mingle with him and feel that he is like grandfather or he is like a friend. What we pray in our prayers, Tomeva Mata Cha Pita Tomeva, one can feel that in whichever form or whichever way or whichever relationship you see him, you could connect with him easily. So, he was very accessible. It is written in the book that he always had chocolate treats for little children or sometimes a sweet or fruit. A child called him Banana Baba. <laughs> because the child loved bananas and always received bananas from Sri Gurudev. Then third aspect of uh, Sri Gurudev's life which I am given to speak about is a life lived by scripture. Sri Gurudev not only studied scriptures or taught a scripture, but he lived by scripture and that is the practical example that why we should study scriptures, why we should uh, practice. The scriptures are not just meant to be read, remembered because sometimes we memorize also. It is not just for memorizing, remembering, reading or even for discussion and lectured about. It is not just like okay, we read something and then we give lecture, forget, we do not practice. That is not the way Gurudev taught. So, the scripture should be lived and applied practically because the scriptures are the spiritual handbooks. 
they are containing the teachings of divine incarnations. Like if you read the holy bible, it is about Jesus, his life and teachings. If you read Bhagavad Gita, you get the teachings of Lord Krishna. If you read Puranas, you get the teachings from saints and sages and about God, his pastime, his life and teaching and so on. And the scriptural books, they reveal the knowledge or divine experience of saints and sages. To read the scriptures is to live in their holy presence or company. When we read some scripture, that means we are in presence of that holy personality about whom we are studying or reading. The, the message from the scriptures must be applied in daily life. For example, in many scriptures, it is written that how to live a disciplined life. So, there is Yama, Niyama and so many different aspects are given, even Yoga Sutra of Patanjali that five Yamas, five Niyamas means when we live with society, when we live within with ourselves, what are the rules or regulations we should follow to transform our life. And one of the aspect is ahimsa or non-violence. So, it is mentioned in the scripture, but it is not just to read and forget, but we have to follow that. Non-violence we have to practice in our daily life. Once we understand the concept from the scripture, then we must practice it in our thoughts, words and actions, not just uh, with the words. If you remember the life of Sri Gurudev, he received his training from his beloved Gurudev Sri Vijay Krishna, who taught him to live in the presence of God. And that is what Gurudev also taught us to live every moment in presence of God and with Kriya it is much easier because our breath is the living presence of God and with each breath we can remember God. It is not difficult, but we forget. Sri Gurudev thoroughly knew and understood the scriptures of different religions and their deeper meanings. However, Kriya Yoga meditation produces a deeper insight and with my own practice I understood more the scriptures which I read 20 years ago and the same verse from Bhagavad Gita or any other passage from the Holy Bible. Now, it is having much more better meaning or deeper insight and it is because of the grace of the master Sri Gurudev. And Gurudev's teachings and explanation of scriptures were not intellectual, but they were very simple which could be applied in our daily life. Gurudev gave instructions to many of us to read a verse from Bhagavad Gita or a passage from the Holy Bible, remember it, understand its meaning, then meditate upon this message and then apply it into daily life. This is how Gurudev has taught, it is the tradition of Kriya Yoga from Lahidi Mahashe onward. So, Gurudev lived the scriptures and taught us about them. Sri Lahidi Mahashe also quoted which Gurudev also reminded us about a Bengali teaching, Puthi mera thuthi, char ved padhe majur, kathni ke log bahut hai, karni ke log dur. What is the meaning? Puthi mera thuthi, puthi means pothi in scriptures. The scriptures are just like spit from my mouth. Those learning the Vedas for mere scholarship are like laborers working for the daily wages or reputation and appreciation. Many can give talks, be knowledgeable and they can interpret scriptures in a nice way. But how many people are there who are speaking and living at the same level? What they speak, they are also practicing. So, that is why Sri Lahidi Masha and Sri Gurudev repeatedly told us Puthi Mera Thuthi, 
it is just like a spit. In scripture, I think it is in Vishnu Puran, there is a verse which says Anabhyase Visham Vidya means the knowledge which we receive from the scripture, it is like a poison if it is not practiced. Because you collect lots of information, you cannot digest and assimilate it, then it will become poison for you. Anabhyase Visham Vidya. So, whenever we learn something, we have to put it into practice. I will tell you a, a story about uh, Pandit. Once several men they were crossing river Ganga in a boat and one of them was a Pandit. Pandit you know the very intellectual learned person, very knowledgeable person who has read scriptures. So, this Pandit started making a great display of his knowledge. So, he asked his fellow passenger, he said that he himself had read the Vedas or um, six schools of philosophies, Vedanta and all different scriptures he had studied. So, he asked his fellow passenger, sir do you know Vedanta? And he said, no. Then he asked, do you know Sankhya philosophy or have you read the Patanjali Yoga Sutra, the Yoga, yoga philosophy? So, he said, no revered sir, I have not read it. You have not read any philosophy? You do not know about any scripture? He said, no, I never did it. And then this Pandit continued talking about the scripture that I know this philosophy, I know this scripture and that. And suddenly at that moment, there was a great storm arose and the boat was about to sink. And then this passenger asked this Pandit, he asked that have you, <coughs> sir do you know how to swim? <laughs> Pandit said no, then he said then do you remember just God. <laughs> so, all the knowledge of different scriptures is not useful. What will a man gain by knowing many scriptures? The one thing needful is to know how to cross the river of this world. God is, God alone is re, uh, real and all else is illusory. Nothing is real except God, but still we forget and we are continuously making mistakes and again coming and going in this world birth and rebirth. Sri Gurudev said that if you read the menu in a restaurant, your hunger will not be satisfied. For that you have to order the food, take in hand, put into the mouth, you have to enjoy it, experience it, then your hunger will be satisfied. So, only theoretical knowledge is not going to help you. Another example Gurudev gave that if you read the atlas in our geography subject in the schools we had. So, the maps of different countries and continents we used to study. So, if you read the atlas, you will not get the real knowledge of that place or even it is said if you look at the atlas or the map of the world, 70 percent earth is covered by water. And if you, <laughs> Gurudev said that if you squeeze the atlas, not a single drop of water will come out of that. But it says it is 70 percent water, but it is a theoretical knowledge. We have to put this knowledge from the scripture or teachings of the master into practice. And that is why Gurudev remind us, reminded us constantly, an ounce of practice is far better than tons of theories. You do not need to read too many scriptures, too many books. Otherwise, you will become a bookworm. <laughs> that is what Gurudev used to say. Read a little, but practice it. <coughs> if you remember in our Kriya Yoga logo, we have two eyes, two eyebrows, and third eye. And below this symbol, Sri Swami Sri Yukteswarji, when he prepared this, there is a beautiful quote. 
it is from the scripture Mahabharat and another scripture. The complete verse is not there, but a part of the verse is mentioned there and this is uh, written. Do you remember what is written? Mahajano Yena Gataha Sapantha that is in Sanskrit and in English it is translated that that is the path directed by the realized. Mahajano Yena Gataha Sapantha. I remember a uh, funny story about it. Mahajano Yena Gataha Sapantha. In India, long time ago, there were four Brahmins. Brahmins were priest. They were young and they were living in a town, and all the four they were very friendly to each other. And when they were young, they thought of studying in some good school. So, next day they went to a city of Kannauj in North India, there is a city called Kannauj, I think it is present time Kanpur nearby. There. So, and they took admission in a very famous school. After that they continued studying. So, they completed their study in 12 years and became very learned person. After that having deliberated that they had learned enough, they had gained enough education, they went to their teacher and taking his the teacher's permission they returned to their village along with all their scriptural books. Now, <coughs> when they had crossed, when they had covered a short distance, they came across a tri junction here we call fork. Okay. So, now they were confused which of the two ways would lead to their village because they came 12 years ago. So, which path is whether to go to this side or that side? Their mind was not clear. So, they discussed among themselves and one of them looked at the book to find the instruction in such a case. Because when you are not clear, when you are confused, so you need some guidance. Nowadays, we have GPS. <laughs> so, they looked at the GPS which was the scripture, the books which they had learned. Maybe what is the instruction there? Let us see. And coincidentally, a money lender, we call them Baniya, okay? a money lender had died in a nearby village and many people were taking his dead body towards the river for cremation. At the same time, one of the Brahmins found the answer in the book about choosing the right path. It was written Mahajano Yena Gatasa Pantha, the same Mahajano Yena Gatasa Pantha. None of them realized or paid attention to the meaning of the word Mahajana here and which path is instructed in the scripture, they did not pay attention to that. Mahajan also means the money lender or baniya, <laughs> they call Mahajan. So, Mahajan means also one because in Sanskrit one word has many meanings. So, Mahajan means also money lender, but they did not think that here Mahajan is meant for the great person or leader. So, he just read the, from the book that one should follow the path where Mahajan is going. <laughs> and they all joined the group of people to the cremation ground <laughs> because it is the instruction. Now, this is the theoretical knowledge in which Gurudev said that it is not going to help you only. So, they all went to the cremation ground. Now, upon reaching the cremation ground, they saw a donkey and they had studied all these years in a secluded hermitage and they had not seen any animal during that period of time. So, one of them asked what is this, what this creature was because they never saw donkey in long time. Now, the second Pandit, the second priest, he looked at the scripture and he found the answer in another verse. So, the verse is Utsave Vyasane Prapte Durbhikshe Shatru Sankate 
राजद्वारे शमशाने च यह तिष्ठति स बांधव मीन्स इन दी फेस्टिवल इन द जॉय इन सौरो इन फेमिन और फाइटिंग विथ एनिमीज और इन द कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ दुर्भिक्षे शत्रु संकटे राजद्वारे देन द क्रिमेशन ग्राउंड शमशान सो इन दीज प्लेसेस हु एवर इज स्टैंडिंग विथ यू इज योर फ्रेंड सो द पंडित रिसाइटेड दिस वर्स and told that donkey is our friend because he is standing in the cremation ground with us so he is our friend now one of these pandits priest one of them was hugging the donkey because he is the friend and someone started washing the feet of the donkey it was going on and suddenly they noticed a camel and they were surprised to see some strange creature moving very fast but they could not understand what it was and this time the third pandit searched in the scripture and found another verse it says dharmasya tvarita gati dharma means righteousness has a rapid movement and they concluded that this camel is dharma camel is righteousness but then the fourth pandit remembered a verse which he had studied before ishtam dharmena yojayet means one should combine the beloved with the dharma <laughs> so they immediately tied the donkey with the camel's neck because it is written they should be combined so they combine they tied the donkey with the neck of the camel and someone informed the washerman about who came means what was happening here people were also observing so somebody informed the washerman and the washerman came there in the cremation ground with a stick in hand and he started beating these pandits that what you are doing with my donkey <laughs> looking at the washerman and getting beating they all ran away now after a while they came across a river now the question was how to cross the river while contemplating on it they saw a palash you can say banyan tree a banyan leaf like this they saw a banyan leaf floating on the water so coincidentally one of them remembered a verse about a leaf you know this is how the knowledge works agamishyati yat patram tat param tarishyati what is the meaning the leaf appearing to you will help you to cross <laughs> now the scripture cannot be wrong one of them jumped on the leaf without a second thought he did not know swimming hence he was drowning the other pandit caught hold of his friend by the tuft because they had this ponytail or tuft so he caught him by tuft it was very difficult to hold the drowning by holding the tuft and the third pandit remembered a teaching from the book it says that if everything is slipping away from your hand then wise people save something out of whatever is possible and let it go so if everything is lost then it is disaster this is the verse thinking on this line he severed the head of the drowning pandit because what i can say whatever little i can say so he just cut the head now the three pandits remained because one is gone somebody so somehow they struggled and then they reached a village when villagers knew that they were brahmins they were invited for lunch by the three householders one of them was served now they went to different houses so one of them was served uh, sevai noodles because sometimes you have tasted this is a very thin um, noodles 
vermicelli and we make payasam or milk pudding with that. So, he was served the noodles. Looking at the long noodles, looking at the long noodles, he remembered the verse Dirgh Sutri Vinashyati. <laughs> Dirgh Sutri Vinashyati means a lazy man goes to destruction. Dirgh Sutri is lazy man, that is the meaning. Dirgh Sutri Vinashyati, a lazy person goes to destruction. Now, he thought that if he would eat these long noodles, because Dirgh Sutri is also long noodles, another meaning. So, he thought that if he eats these long noodles, which is also translated as the long thread, he will be destroyed. So, he left without eating. Because Dirgha Sutri, how can I eat? I will be destroyed. So, he did not eat. The second Pandit was given a chapati to eat in other house, you know, Indian bread. He remembered from the book that anything spread too much has left lifespan. Anything which is spread too much has less lifespan. Ati vistara vistirna tad bhavet na chirayusham, this is the verse. If he would eat chapati, he thought if he would eat chapati, his lifespan would reduce. So, he also did not eat and left hungry. The third one was offered vada, you know from South India they know the fried stuff with moong, uh, urad dal, so vada. So, he, vada was offered to him. He remembered a verse, chidreshu anartha bahuli bhavanti. If you see the vada, it is nicely uh, fried and in the middle there is a hole. Like a donut. Like a donut. So, chidreshu anartha bahuli bhavanti, the meaning is that if the chidra, chidra means secret or hole. If the secret is open, then it will be a disaster. Because if, if you know something and if it is known to other people, then it will harm you. So, there are some things which are kept secret, however. But he understood chidra, the meaning of chidra as a whole, because it has both. Chidra means secret, chidra also the whole. So, he thought that there is a hole in the vada. So, thinking that he would meet his disaster by eating vada, which he had, which had whole, he did not eat and he also remained hungry. So, people were all laughing on their knowledge and they thought people were appreciating them. You know, there is a joke about it. Uh, once a baby mosquito, means just, just grown up, baby mosquito took his first flight. So, he came back after 10 minutes of flight and his parents asked that how was the flight and he said that oh it was so nice wherever I went people were clapping. <laughs> so, like this the, the people were laughing above on these pundits and they said they thought that they were, people were appreciating them. <laughs> However, so they all had to return their hometown remaining hungry. What is the moral of this story? The bookish knowledge from the scriptures makes you fool, okay? it is not enough unless you understand and practice it. And that is why Sri Gurudev used to say that you all are educated fools. <laughs> he said that we have got education, but we have not really applied, we have not understood the message. So, what we are going to make? We will be like these pandits. However, Today, remembering Sri Gurudev and his teachings, he lived a life of simplicity, he lived by scripture and he lived a life by example, not just telling do this. He himself demonstrated in his life, in his words, actions, in thoughts that how to live a simple, disciplined, God conscious life and he also lived a life free from dogmatic views. Let us learn and practice to respect, to accept all, to respect all, to live with love in this 
difficult time and still continuing our practice attain realization as he did. Okay. So, I am praying to God, praying to Sri Gurudev to give us more discipline, more love, inner strength to continue our practice and follow his footprints to become a good disciple.